Some people online claim that it is entitled to ask for upgrades at hotels. They claim that you should always book the exact room that you want and that you should never ask for an upgrade even if you have status. I think that claim is complete BS. Hi, my name is Sean. I'm the UC Berkeley graduate that created and taught the university-sponsored course on credit card rewards. I'm here with my co-host, Sherwin. Hi, everyone. I'm Sherwin. I'm a Stanford student who's really into the credit card points, miles, travel, loyalty programs, hobby. Here to share with you some of the things I've learned along the way. So today's episode is titled, Is it entitled to ask for an upgrade at a hotel? Uh, this is a fairly controversial question mark topic. People have strong opinions about it, but we are going to boldly share our opinion about this topic today. Uh, so Sean, give us a quick rundown of your hot take. So, okay. A lot of people say that when you're checking into these hotels, that you should book the room that you want. It seems like a simple enough argument. Don't get disappointed when you don't get upgrades, even if upgrades are available. If you want that room, you should book that room. Now, I think that is a complete BS claim because first of all, the room that I want is always the presidential suite. Let's be clear. That's always the room that I want. I think that's the room that you would want too. I don't blame you for that. The correct way to say this is that book the at least the lowest tier room that you are happy with if you don't get an upgrade. That's fine. I, I think you should book a room that you won't be unhappy with if there's not any upgrades available. But I have this problem with people saying it's entitled to expect an upgrade. I think if you have elite status that is supposed to grant you an upgrade, which you are eligible for, and then that upgrade happens to be available when you check in, that you should expect that upgrade. You have held up your end of the bargain with the hotel chain by acquiring that status. It is now their turn to hold up their end of the bargain by giving you that upgrade that you are supposed to be eligible for. Yes. To be clear, what Sean is maintaining and what I agree with uh, is not that, you know, we should expect and demand that upgrades be available when they're really literally booked up. That's not what we're saying. We're saying it is problematic when a hotel would rather leave the room empty or try to sell it super last minute, even though it's improbable, um, than to upgrade one of their elites. Uh, and, you know, this whole concept of entitlement, I think is, I think people oversimplify it, right? Like when someone has elite status as a hotel, generally that means they have been loyal to that hotel chain or they've earned it through some credit card and you know even if you earn it with the credit card that's a legitimate status because the bank of that credit card is paying money to the hotel chain so they're getting revenue from you from doing that or regardless you know room upgrades are generally an advertised aspect of a loyalty program that consumers participate in understanding that by spending more nights at these hotel chains by spending on your credit cards whatever they're able to access these benefits. It's not something people are arbitrarily demanding uh, because they think they should get everything in the world. No, it's like, you know, they have held up their end of the bargain, as Sean said, with that hotel loyalty program, already that status. They should expect, heck, I would say they should be entitled to those upgrades, having spent, you know, those nights, uh, having having gotten those credit cards where the banks are paying the hotel chains money uh, for those benefits. I agree. And I think I've, I've seen this sentiment and some people like in some comments have said this to me where, oh, you guys, you guys don't know what loyalty is. You're just getting it through the credit cards and using points for all your stays. So what? They've let us do that. That's how they've defined their loyalty program. I didn't make Hyatt have to accept these made up points. They created them. And they said, okay, you can use these for stays. I am following the guidelines that Hyatt set out. Okay, yes, I'm not paying cash for all my Hyatt stays. So what? I'm transferring the points from Chase into Hyatt. That is something that Hyatt has specifically defined us as consumers to have the ability to do. We are following the, their loyalty program as how they have laid it out. So just because we're earning status with a credit card, just because we're using free night certificates, just because we are kind of playing the system to our advantage... It's their system that they made. So we are following all the rules here. So if we have acquired the statuses that we are trying to acquire, it doesn't matter how we did it. 
loyalty is not defined by the number of nights you stay with a hotel chain, believe it or not. It's defined by the elite status you have acquired with that hotel chain. So whether that be acquired by spending the actual nights, spending on a credit card, earning it via credit card, it doesn't matter because we have followed those rules as they have laid it out. So it is not entitled to ask for an upgrade. I think we should also talk about how some etiquettes we have about getting upgrades. So as you have said before, we're not expecting upgrades when the hotel is sold out. Okay, I'm not going into a Marriott property as a silver elite going, I see the presidential suite available on the app. Why aren't you giving it to me for my 14 night stay that I booked through Expedia? Okay, <laughs> like we're, we have reasonable you know, expectations and requests. Our expectations are, okay, I show up to a Hyatt as a globalist and I see on the app a standard suite available for sale. I expect to get that standard suite because that is how Hyatt has laid out the terms of their program. And, you know, in Hyatt's usually they have done that. But if there's an issue, that is an issue that I believe to be a legitimately big enough issue to complain about to a concierge or to uh, just Hyatt customer support because that's how they've laid out the program. Our expectations are not unreasonable by any means. They're all just what the program has defined and what the program has advertised itself to be. Yeah, I agree. I, you know, I really like Hyatt because they're very clear about what you can expect as a globalist, as a, you know, as explorist, best room available, as a globalist, best room available, including standard suites. Um, you know, other programs are more amorphous. They'll do something like subject to availability at check-in or whatever. But generally, you know, if I see like a better room type or like a standard suite on an app that's being sold... It does annoy me, you know, if they refuse to upgrade you, assuming you have like legitimate elite status, not just a base level, right? That, you know, to me, it's like, oh, they would rather leave that empty, that upgraded room empty and not give it to anyone than to reward like a loyal customer. And like, I think that is something to be legitimately bothered about because it's not like the hotel is likely going to be making extra revenue with that empty room or something. Um, it's something like, I feel like it's like the least you could do. I totally agree. And I think that it's always important to remember that these hotels, yes, they're individually managed, but they have out of their own free will chosen to join these hotel chains where they've had these status programs. So they've known they've have to do this. They're supposed to do this. They're receiving benefits by being a part of a major chain. It, you know, if a Ritz, if a Ritz Carlton property joined Marriott, and, you know, became a Ritz-Carlton, they are getting really great recognition internationally. All the Marriott members now can search for that property on the Marriott app and see it, and they're going to get much higher occupancy because of that. They are benefiting because of that. But in exchange for that, of course, they are paying franchise fees and, you know, points and all that, but they're supposed to honor elite benefits just like any other property. So it's a two-way street across this whole thing. I think we should also cover some kind of misconceptions people were probably already typing down in the comments. So, okay. But the app doesn't always show accurate room inventory. BS, come on. You're telling me, like, now, granted, there's some exceptions. But really, you're telling me if I can go on the app right now and I see five different suite categories available that are all, like, let's say, you know, fairly low tier. Like, I see a junior suite, a better view room, a standard suite, and even, let's say, just a premium suite, all available on the app. Like, come on. Like, they're not going to be for sale. Even if this just a standard suite for sale. Like, really, you're telling me if I go right now to buy it, what's going to happen? Like, are you really telling me the app is just going to not let me buy it? Look, some exceptions happen. Totally get it. Grand Hyatt in Atlanta, I saw a standard suite on the app, but they said it was an error. And five minutes later, all the inventory on the app was gone. You know what? That was fair. The hotel was actually legitimately sold out. Totally fine. But if it's like, you know, I've been seeing all day these suites open on the app and then I try to ask for it. Oh, sorry. Nah, it's, it's, it's actually not accurate. It's not there. Like, I know it's there. They just don't want to give it to you. Again, I feel like some it, it really bothers me when it, I think it's duplicitous, frankly, to say that, oh, sorry, we can't upgrade you because it's not available. It's sold out uh, when we know that to be false based on the absence. I would almost rather them saying, sorry, our hotel policy does not allow us to upgrade this level of status to this type of room. Like, that sucks, but I get it. But for you to say that, oh, it's sold out 
when I know for a fact that it's empty or there's availability is false or it's it's just dishonest and hotels should stop doing that. Uh, like if you don't want to upgrade us, at least uh, be honest about it. I agree. I really appreciate when a hotel is upfront and honest. So like I'll give you an example. I was checking in uh, and we talked, I talked about this hotel previously, the Royal Hawaiian in Waikiki. I was checking in, I was trying to get an upgrade and you know, I eventually did get the upgrade, but before that, the lady was telling me that uh, to be totally honest with you, you know, your platinum status, you are eligible for upgrades, but there's a lot of elites and we do have to prioritize in order of elite status. I appreciated that response because that totally to, to a degree makes sense. Okay. Now I, I is supposed to be at time of check-in and all that, but if a hotel was legitimately prioritizing room inventory by elite status, that's a legitimate excuse. An ambassador should get a better room before I do. A titanium, I was platinum at the time, should get a better room before the platinum member does. That is what should be happening. Now, I did end up getting the upgrade and all that, so that was great, but I, I agree. I hate it when a hotel says it's sold out. If it's sold out, it wouldn't be showing on the app for me to buy. Other counter arguments, but elite status is so diluted that hotels don't have any rooms to upgrade into. Okay, first of all, it, again, if the hotel is sold out or the room inventory is full, totally fine. That's okay. What I have a problem with is hotels using diluted elite status as an excuse to not upgrade at all. So I'll give a property that does this. Waldorf Astoria Monarch Beach. This hotel does not like to upgrade Hilton Diamonds very high at all. We're really talking like one category, maybe two category upgrades. I got an upgrade to a room with a fire pit and it was like this big deal to the front desk. Like the guy literally looked like shocked that they gave that to me. It was just a room with a fire pit. That was the only difference. And I was there when there was no one at the hotel. It was like empty. It was like one of the most empty hotels I've seen. They wouldn't even give us a 2 p.m. late checkout. Like, I understand Hilton Diamond in the U.S. is very, very diluted. But really, like when there's no one there, you couldn't just cough up a little bit of a later checkout or a little bit better of a room upgrade. Like that doesn't cost you anything, really. And there was no reason not to do it in the sense that there was no you know, occupancy issue at all. So that that's something that does really bother me. Yeah, I think it's fair. I think, again, it, we are reasonable in that we're not going to demand upgrades when you know it's busy, it's full, there are other elites or whatever. Uh, I think we'll, our more nuanced, precise argument is that what bothers us is when there is that availability and they just don't want to honor it. Uh, and again, it's not because you know, we we think we're very important people and we should get all the stuff we want because we're entitled, but no, because we have invested our time and energy and to some extent, some revenue, whether through paid stays or through credit cards toward an elite program. And yeah, when you invest something toward a goal or something, you expect to get something out of it. And it's just frustrating, especially when hotels are not forthcoming about this issue. Sean, are there any other counter arguments i guess i, I have a few quickly address but the room might not be cleaned yet or maybe they're waiting to see if they could sell it later in the day okay if the room's not clean tell me that maybe i'll wait for it that's fine oh if they're waiting to see if they could sell it later in the day that's not okay because that's not how the terms of your program are defined it's supposed to be availability at check-in not oh at 9 p.m when we can't sell the suite anymore it's at check-in so if i'm checking in at my uh, you know allowed check-in time i should be getting the suite uh, you sound entitled. Room upgrades are a gift, not an expectation. We've covered this. It's not a gift. It's we've earned the status and we've held up our end. So if it's available at check-in, we should be getting it. And then I think... I also really irk when like the hotel makes it sound like it's a big favor that they're upgrading you. I don't see it as a favor as a personal. I shouldn't have to ask really very hard for it or have the upgrade conditional on certain aspects of my behavior. Upgrades are an aspect of the loyalty program that the hotel is part of. That's why we expect it, not because we want favors. It's really not a favor. So stop characterizing it as a favor. Totally agree. I have two more counter arguments I want to address. So one, and this is like people love to throw this as a silver bullet. The terms state that upgrades are up to the hotel's own discretion. It isn't guaranteed. Okay, Hyatt, that does not true. Hyatt is very, very clear on that. For the other chains, the thing is, 
this is my argument, okay? Hotels are in the business of hospitality. They're supposed to host you. They're supposed to give you a good experience. There's a reason I'm not going to Airbnbs, especially at these luxury properties. There's a reason I'm, you're paying the premium, whether it be cash or points. You're trying to do it as a good experience. If I'm at a hotel that has reasonable upgrades available and refuses to give them to me just because they're not arbitrarily defining them as available, that's a bad, stingy hotel. That's not a good hotel. To quote from one of my favorite YouTube creators, who probably, I think he quoted from someone else, Flip Flop Traveler, in hospitality, perception is reality. If, as a guest, we perceive a hotel as stingy, it doesn't actually really matter to some degree how stingy they are, because what matters is the guest perception. The point is the experience. Now, again, we're not being unreasonable here. I'm not expecting the presidential suite, but if there's a standard suite and the hotel just arbitrarily refuses to give it to me, that's a stingy hotel. I don't like that hotel. The final counter argument is, you guys sound like awful guests to deal with. You must be so rude coming out here, oh, pulling out the Hyatt terms of service. We got like three lawyers in the back going, combing through it and saying, no, you, you got to show it, give us this. First of all, both of us do our very, very, very best to always be extremely polite and respectful to every staff member at every hotel. When asking for upgrades, even though here we're saying that we should be entitled to the upgrade, I never go, oh, I'm entitled to the upgrade. Give me the upgrade. I just say, oh, hey, um, you know, I'm really excited to be here. I see on the app that this room is available. Would it be possible to receive a globalist upgrade, a platinum upgrade, a diamond upgrade? And then if it's beyond what I'm supposed to be, sometimes I'll even throw in, look, I know it's usually beyond what I'm supposed to be entitled to. I'm just curious because if you had any extra availability, it looks really cool. And one, to do that because it's nice to just be nice to people in general. It's a general principle of traveling and being a decent human being. But second, if your goal is to get an upgrade, being nice is the best strategy possible. They don't want to upgrade people that are mean. I will push back if there's, you know, if they're just blatantly denying me uh, a standard suite when it's open or a room upgrade, I will gently push back and and say, like, I do see it on the app. Is it possible to double check uh, with X status or whatever? I think it should be eligible. But again, never being rude, anything like that. If I really do want to complain, there's a respectful way to complain, whether it be on the survey whether it be sending in an email, you don't have to be rude to the front desk. So just because we are complaining about something doesn't mean we're just automatically rude to the front desk. We always do our very best to be as respectful and nice as possible. Yes, I think it would be helpful to close with a few examples. So um, I'll share, I know Sean already shared the water story of Monarch Beach as a negative example. So I'll share two contrasting examples to make my point a little clearer. So there's this one property, I'm not going to name it directly, but they, we were globalists at this high and they offered us some kind of upgrade, but there was a, a higher upgrade that I was wondering if I could get. And I asked, oh, would it be possible to get that room? Now, when I asked, I already knew that the room was available in the app. However, I did not necessarily expect to be entitled to that upgrade uh, because it was kind of a higher category. Now, if the check-in agent had said, oh, sorry, uh, our policy is to only upgrade to the category we offered you and not the up one, it would have been fine, right? I wouldn't have said the more of accepted. I wouldn't have been too disappointed. It was just worth asking. But that's not what she said. She actually said, oh, sorry, we are sold out of that room type, right? And that's where the problem occurs because I know for a fact that the room was actually available according to the apps. Uh, so then I, you know, pushed back again respectfully and gently we're not be trying to be mean or annoying, right? We're just trying to understand the situation. So I was like, oh, I did see that it was on the app earlier. Would you mind checking it again? Um, and then, then she had to go talk to a manager or whatever. And then suddenly the room became available for some reason, even though it was supposedly sold out. So, you know, that's not a great experience. Uh, I think if she had just told me like, oh, this, sorry, we don't upgrade to this type of room. Like I wouldn't actually have been upset. But the fact that they said it was sold out, even though was like just don't assume that your customers are unaware of things or um you know honesty always goes a long way i'll give you a contrasting example of a really good experience i had um i was going to the waldorf astoria los cabos uh so it's actually a very recent trip and not even close in but months ahead of time uh i emailed the general manager and asking oh it wasn't like I wanted to score a big upgrade or anything, to be clear. But I was like, oh, 
we're going to have four people in this reservation. Would it be okay for you to accommodate us? I understand the base room that can be buffed using points only has one bed. So we prefer we have two beds, but we understand this is subject to availability, whatever. And then uh, the not only did the manager say they were able to accommodate us, but he automatically upgraded us to a room with two beds, like multiple months before our stay, which is already really amazing because it's not something we expect. It's just, uh, you know, as Sean said, really good hospitality. And then like a week or so before our stay, uh, it got even better because I saw an app they automatically upgraded us even more beyond, in fact, to a two-bedroom villa that was easily the most memorable hotel experience I've ever had in my whole life, right? Now, I'm not saying I expect this type of treatment from everyone or whatever, but, it, you know, like this type of, you know, soft treatment, kind of, uh, like just the idea that they really recognize the loyalty status and are willing to give things that are available, even if even though they don't have to, Right, really speaks volumes about the perception of the quality of a hotel. So, so hopefully those examples help illustrate what I'm thinking about. Again, it's not about uh, you know being mean and demanding things, but it's about understanding hotels, uh, upgrades as an aspect of the loyalty program, and like the perception of of generosity is really helpful for us. Yeah, I want to throw in just like a final example. I with you, when you got that upgrade, it gave you such a good perception of that hotel. You thought, wow, this is a nice hotel. This is a generous hotel. I was at the Ritz Carlton Abu Dhabi and they had upgraded me to a one bedroom garden villa. And I think that's the one I was supposed to be entitled to. It wasn't open at check-in and I was there very early. And then at first someone said like, oh, I'm sorry, we're going to, it'll be ready soon. Um, you know, we can come to the restaurant for now or whatever. But then the, I think the manager sitting next door was like, you know what? Just take the two bedroom garden villa. Why not? It's open right now. And that gave me such a wonderful perception of that hotel for the rest of my stay that, you know, they could have had me wait. Totally would have been valid. They had followed what they needed to do. They upgraded me as I was supposed to be upgraded. But, the, you know, the room wasn't ready. Totally fair. Could have had to wait. But to give me a good experience at the hotel, they decided to upgrade me further. And not only did I have a good experience because of the amazing upgrade, but I'm also like, wow, they didn't make me wait for several hours for this room to be ready. And as a guest, it just gave me, I'm like, wow, I love this hotel. And from the re for the rest of my stay, I'm sure I had some internal bias of the hotel going, wow, this is a great hotel. Where, versus if I, you know, let's say they were, had refused to upgrade me to what I was supposed to be upgraded to. I would have been going, you know, this hotel, I don't know. I don't know my perception of them because they weren't that generous. They didn't follow what they're supposed to do it really does shift the whole stay. And it's your very first interaction pretty much with that hotel. So when they upgrade you, it really just sets a good tone for the stay and a good tone for how the hotel wants to treat its guests and how the hotel wants to interact with the loyalty program it's a part of. Yes, I think my best experiences are when they really understand the loyalty program, really do their best to deliver all all benefits without me having to ask for it as compared to an experience where I constantly have to beg for benefits to be honored, even though they were clearly aspects of the loyalty program or have this kind of weird attitude where what they're doing is considered a favor, even though I don't think it's a favor if I'm investing my time and energy and revenue into a program that's supposed to confer benefits that are to be expected. So I think, yeah, that's just a general idea. Um, you know, what do you think? Leave your comment. Uh, leave your thoughts in the comments below. Uh, we'd love to hear them. Um, Sean, do you have anything else to add? I think that's pretty much everything else. If you want to debate this with me or you want to debate this with Sean, check out the 100% free Discord at the link in the description. We drop deal alerts, uh, war dumps, everything really amazing. And you can debate it with us. Uh, really, thank you so much for watching. If you want to help support the channel directly, the easiest way to do so is to use our credit card affiliate links. Whenever you do a plan to apply for a card, it really does help out so much. You have no idea, but thank you so much for watching and we will see you next week.